Bill Mears here with McGuire Mears & Associates. Cobalt Banker Commercial published a white paper, National Real Estate Outlook 2021, What Will Drive the Recovery of CRE Markets in 2021. We'll summarize that report and offer some of our uh, observations about our market, Rock County, portion of Walworth County, Roscoe Rockton, South Beloit, Illinois. But first, let's take a look back. The pandemic expedited the declining demand for retail brick and mortar and increased online shopping that was already growing fast. Uh, with supposedly it, it accelerated about by about four years. Winners and losers, hospitality, restaurants and bars, that's certainly not news to anyone. Uh, I would note that I uh, talked with a hotel operator recently, their occupancy rate is up to about 60%, certainly Good news, way, way better than it has been the last six months or so. So that could be recovering now. What winners were logistics, you know, getting product to and from the market, and quick service restaurants that were able to adapt to curbside pickup. And, of course, they had their drive throughs to, to support them as well. Net least office space surprisingly held its own. I think it certainly did in our market. We uh, do not have the great big uh, uh, office complexes that you see in the urban areas. So, uh, at, at, but apparently they, they hung in there as well, but we certainly held our own. McGuire Mears and Associates did over $20 million in commercial real estate transactions in 2020. So it was a positive year in terms of uh, overall commercial real estate. 2020 outlook is gonna be led by industrial, grocery, retail, multiple family, land, single tenant at least, and drive through properties. I think exciting news is that they ex expect tertiary markets will grow because people uh, have a preference now a little bit more about where they want to live and uh, where they want to work. Uh, vacant malls will be repurposed for non-traditional tenants. We don't have a vacant mall, but we do have a regional mall with vacancies, and certainly uh, we may see uh, some obsolete retail space being transitioned to non-traditional. Uh, we think there's going to be a recovering economy, and that paired with low interest rates should help sustain the private investor market and may push commercial real estate assets prices higher in 2021. We're seeing that certainly in an industrial uh, lease rates that have been increasing. So that a good segue into the, the getting into talking about the each individual sector. Uh, the first one that we expect that will be in, in the lead is industrial. Uh, interesting that they comment in the uh, report that tertiary markets are going to be challenged by uh, lack of suitable product buildings. And um, we already have seen in the paper a couple of times uh, Beloit, uh, Hendricks uh, uh, commercial properties, they're going to be uh, building two uh, uh, spec buildings in the Gateway, uh, and there are three spec buildings going up in Janesville. The, that will total over a million square feet. So we're going to be well positioned to uh, take advantage of the recovering economy, and this tertiary market is not going to be challenged. Uh, also, I would like to mention Class and uh, Quality Chocolate with their 150-acre uh, purchase in Milton, and the 200, about a 250,000 square foot initial project breaking ground this spring. The next one is retail, and certainly some real concern for retail markets and bar restaurants in our markets. Uh, most of our uh, communities, cities have made significant strides in downtown development in the last decade. Uh, large and medium boxes have been backfilled with some major exceptions that may well provide for the non-traditional uses mentioned above. Uh, retail sales have remained strong as measured by sales tax. Third and fourth quarters uh, in Rock County set a record, totaling close to $9 million plus in revenues. The headwinds that we see for retail are zoning ordinances that are long overdue for an update. They're out of step with fast-changing retail and even the office landscape. We think that uh, uh, retail reinvention will be uh, seen with distribution centers, uh, micro warehouses for last mile delivery, 
a thing called ghost kitchens where uh, re restaurants and, and catering services just use the kitchen and uh, and ship food out uh, by uh, quick delivery. Multiple family, which we've talked about, uh, uh, that some of the uh, vacant boxes could very well be transformed into multiple family. Medical offices, schools, and churches. Uh, headwind here, uh, as well as zoning, is also the overall cost of uh, uh, adaptive reuse. I think we're, it's, it was largely touted, but I think what we're finding in reality is that in some cases, it's just too darn expensive. Multiple housing is certainly going to lead the way, as we know, uh, in, in uh, the uh, recovery we mentioned earlier. Uh, in 2020, Janesville saw its first new apartment complex completed in a decade. That was the first olive out of the jar. Two more are finishing up this year. Uh, the three projects in Janesville deliver about 500 new units in a market that has less than 2% vacancy rate. Most importantly, I think that 92 units are targeted for workforce housing. Uh, if we're going to uh, if we're going to provide uh, labor, uh, we're going to have have to have a place for folks to live, and I think that's an important uh, aspect. There's momentum for multiple family housing in our communities. How do we maintain it? Rental income is hard pressed to keep up with the cost per unit. Uh, tax increment financing has played a big role in the development of the multiple family housing in, in uh, Janesville. Uh, and it needs to stay in effect if we're going to maintain this momentum. Uh, I know Beloit, the city of Beloit, is also looking at tax increment financing. There's uh, some language in the law that may allow for them to uh, use tax increment financing in the future. I've mentioned, I've included rather, single family development. Uh, it wasn't mentioned in the Cobalt or commercial report, and we don't normally think of it as uh, commercial real estate, but I think housing uh, is going to be the economic development challenge uh, for the next decade. Uh, people need a place to live uh, if they are going to choose to live in secondary and tertiary markets, which we hope they do. They've got to have a place to live. Right now, there is uh, almost no housing to be found in the, uh, in, in the moderate to, to inexpensive range in, in our markets, and we're challenged to, uh, to get that done because of the cost of infrastructure to the developers and the single-family housing uh, contractors. Cities and communities are going to have to find a way to help them with infrastructure. The cost of that is very high, as well as the cost of uh, building uh, materials. The office outlook, stay-at-home orders certainly impacted the office sector. Vacancy is low in our market compared to just a few years ago. Downsizing may contribute to that as well. One thing to keep an eye on is the office space that exists in some of our larger employers in the industrial and medical sector. We traditionally think of industrial buildings with a lot of thought to the office, without a lot of thought to the office space within. How many of those office jobs will return once we have all been vaccinated? Lots of empty parking lots in front of the office. Our view, watch for growth in the medical sector with one large project considering uh, Janesville, also the potential for more uh, small outpatient clinics. The CBC National Outlook uh, for 2021 didn't, didn't have a section on technology, uh, perhaps because it overlays so much of the other sectors we, that we've been exploring. Uh, I was uh, bemused to see an article in Inc. Magazine about how not all tech is gravitating to Nashville and Austin, naming Madison, Wisconsin as a major magnet. Well, uh, perhaps, uh, as I prepared my remarks for today, uh, it was in the teens, but it did get my wheels turning regarding our local economy. While North Star and Shine deservedly commands most of the attention in regards to high tech, there is new technology germinating out of Iron Tech and the Janesville Innovation Center, like American Extractions, which recently was profiled in the Milwaukee Business Journal. And certainly, our local manufacturing companies are on the cutting edge of new technologies for manufacturing and packaging. We think that the Innovation Center and Iron Tech will continue to nurture new technology companies that will need to find new homes and jobs, labor, for their growing businesses. 
Well, now it's time to look at a crystal ball. The sudden shift to work from home created new expectations about flexibility. People are making new choices about where they want to live and where they want to work. And the massive deployment of remote work tech platforms certainly has accelerated that push. How will we take advantage of the transition? We're bullish about 2021. Pinup demand will impact retail sales. Government assistance will save some small businesses. And we're strategically positioned for logistics with access to I-90 and I-43. We think headwinds will be housing and labor.